ביצה פרק ג' משנה ה', ביצה, third chapter, fifth משנה. בהמה שמתה, you have an animal that dies. לא יזיזנה ממקומה, you know how to touch it. In יום טוב. In יום טוב, yeah. So you have an animal that dies in יום טוב. You're not allowed to move it from its place. It says, what do you mean? Oh, what do you mean it says? בגמרא מבואס, the Gemara explains, it's not a regular animal, it's a specific animal. What's a specific animal? שמדובר כאן בבהמת קודשים. You're talking about over here an animal that you thought about, not that you thought about, that belongs to the temple. What does it mean an animal that belongs to the temple? For example, a bechor. You've got a firstborn animal. That you know you need to give it to the coin. You didn't give it yet. Uh, and he died. And he died. So it says, you, in other words, in your mind, it was never food, this animal. Since it was never food, it wasn't your food, it belongs to the coin, belongs to the temple, you can't say, maybe I can use it now. Because it was never food in your mind. It says, the rule is that if you want to use something on Yom Tov, even for cooking, even for giving it to somebody else, it has to be in your mind when Yom Tov comes in, that you have availability to it. She says, שאחר מיטתה, but this animal, it was out of your mind, it was מוקצה, that's what the word מוקצה is, it was disattached from your understanding. שאחר מיטתה, אסורה היא בהנאה. Now you're not, you cannot even feed it to your dog. You can't do anything with it. ותאונה קבורה, and therefore you have to bury it. הילקח לא יזן למקומה. By the way, even if it wasn't, if it was a Yom Chol, you can give it to your dogs. Again, why? Because it's a holy, it's a holy thing? Regardless. But we're not talking about this. Let's say another animal. The example that Moshe gave, his chicken died on Yom Tov. So the queen, he has a dog. So the question is, can he cut up the chicken and give it to the dog? Or not even cut up, just give the chicken to the dog. He's allowed to touch it. אבל בהמת חולין שמתה ביום טוב, but an animal, a regular animal, your own animal, that dies on a יום טוב, so now it depends. If you knew that the animal is already about to die, you, you knew it. On ערב יום טוב, just before יום טוב, you saw the animal was like this. Yeah. So in other words, subconsciously you were thinking, ah, If the animal dies, it's food for the dog. You don't have to think it there. You already know it. This is the way your, your mind works. So if you saw it, that it was about to die Erev Yom Tov, and it died on Yom Tov, you can give it to the dog because subconsciously, that's what you were thinking. But if it wasn't, it was a healthy animal, it wasn't sick, in other words, you didn't think that if it dies, you're going to give it to the dog, therefore you're not allowed to. Let's see. אם הייתה מסוכנת ממערב יום טוב, if that animal was about to die the day before the holy day, מותר לחתך אותה לפני הכלבים. You're allowed to cut it up, in fact, give it to the dogs, ביום טוב, on יום טוב. Why? שדעתו עליה מאתמול בשביל הכלבים. Because you knew yesterday she was about to die. You see, today people don't think about it. In the old time, things were expensive. You used everything. It was, if you liked it or not, you would have thought about it. If the animal is sick, You know that you can eat it yourself because it's trefa if it's sick, it's about to die. But you know, hey, I'm, I'm, at least I'm going to use it as dog food. It's expensive. But why can you eat it? Why can you give it to the dog? It's not your food. You don't eat it. It's for the for ochel nefesh, but not for ochel nefesh with klavim. It, it, what do you mean ochel nefesh? Do you have to prepare it for the dog now? Are you, for, for, forget ochel nefesh. Yeah. Le, le, let's ask, are you allowed to feed your... Uh, Cows on Shabbos? Yeah. Forget Yom Tov, on Shabbos. Oh, what's, so what's allowed. the problem? So what, if you're allowed to cut it and do all this work and to cook for them and it. No, you don't cook for, for oh. dogs. <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> you <laughs> cut it for But dogs. What you're allowed to do for animals, just... Here you go, l'chatech. <laughs> l'chatech, <laughs> yeah. Okay. The, the fact is, once you're allowed to touch, you'll be allowed to do it. By the way, you might be allowed to, to cook over here also. Yeah. We said, one, you remember the rule, once we, once we permit it, we permit it for other things also. 
ברם, אם לא הייתה מסוכלת מאתמול, אבל אם היא לא הייתה מסוכלת אתמול, אף בהמת חולין אסורה טלטול ביום טוב. So if the person, if that animal wasn't sick the day before, for example, the chicken that you're talking about, right? That chicken that died on a Yom Tov, you didn't know it was sick the day before. You just came in the morning and said it's dead. You can't feed it to the dog. Because you didn't think it's going to be dog food yesterday. When the, it, you had to think that it's going to be dog food when Yom Tov came in. If you thought about it when Yom Tov came in, then it's okay. ומעשה There was a case, ושאלו את רבי טרפון עליה. So there was a case that they came to רבי טרפון and they asked a question. Now what was the case over there? על בהמת קודשים שמתה ביום טוב. It was an animal that belongs to the temple and the animal died when? On a יום טוב. או על החלה שנטמעה. Let's take another case. There's a halacha that every time your wife cooks bread, she bakes bread, she needs to give a portion to the Kohen. That's where we do the thing of afrashat chala. We're not talking about the grains over here. After the grains already been given, that you gave when you finished the harvest, you gave the grain. Besides that, every day, every time she bakes bread, she needs to give a portion to the Kohen. That's what we do, afrashat chala, that the women do. So, it's, so the same thing, we have a problem. If it was an animal that was supposed to go to the temple, that died on Yom Tov, forget about it, you need to bury it, can't do anything with it. What about she separated bread to the Kohen, and then somebody came and touched the Kohen, touched the bread, and this bread now is impure, which means it's not befitting to go to the Kohen. That was on Yom Tov. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the coin's bread now. The doesn't matter. We're talking about the... The, the, the chala itself you're allowed to eat. Yeah. You're allowed to eat when you're but impure. The that to the oh, that's the problem because he's not allowed to eat it now. He's not allowed to eat it now because it's impure. What do you do with it? So, what does it mean? uya la kohen beyom tov. Now this piece of bread, you cannot give it to the kohen yom tov. So what do you do with it? Give it to your dog? It's a question of my Shari asurai be'achila. So therefore, this piece of bread is not about to be eaten. And so you're saying, maybe I'm not allowed to eat it, but you know what I can do with it? I can use it as firewood. You know, add it to the fire and cook on top of it. It, it will burn. Use it. Ve'af la'asikat tachat levtav shilo. No, you're not allowed to have any enjoyment out of it. You have to bury it. Just like what? Just like the animal. It's the same status. Or the Kohen says, I cannot use it. It's true, the Kohen says, even if you give it to the Kohen. Think about it. So the Kohen says, hey, I, I should give it to him. You know what? It's his, first of all. That's why I should give it to him. But then you say, but why are you giving it to him? He cannot use it. So the Kohen says, I can use it. I can, you know what to do with it? I can burn it in the fire. So he said, in other words, I can use this as fuel. He says, you're not allowed to. Or, you know what, I can give it to my dog. He says, even that you're not allowed to. That's the idea. It's just like an animal that belonged to the coin that died. It has to be buried. She'en mevaarim kodashim t'me'im in ha'olam b'yom tov. He says, on a regular day you might be able to do it. There's a rule on yom tov, you're not allowed to do that. On yom tov you do not destroy kodashim even though they become impure. So this is the case that happened with Rabbi Tarfon. ונכנס לבית המדרש ושאל מדינן ואמרו לו חכמים so he came into the temple and they asked what do we do with the thing with the chala or with the sacrifice and the sages answered לא יזיזה ממקומם don't touch it it's מוקצה it became there there's nothing for you to do it with, with them in Yom Tov אסור להזיז את הבהמה you know they've been allowed to move this animal ואת החלה ממקומה ביום טוב, או דחלה from the place in יום טוב. Why? Because שהואיל ואינם ראויים לכלום, אסורים הם בטלטום. Because since they're not befitting for anything, you're not allowed to move them. And 
oh yeah, I don't want to go into this thing so much, but think about the dog, why are you allowed to feed it to your dog? Once it's food for you, it's food for the dog. Yeah. Even in your mind, you thought you're allowed to eat this chicken to, tomorrow, so it makes it food. Now it's not food for you, but it's still food for the dog, therefore I can cut it. Just. And this for the sheep, your obligation is to bury it, or it's the coin obligation to. Good question, I don't know. You may. Bury it, because it's his, it belongs to him. Yeah, but usually it's not his if it's in your property. It will become his when you separate. Usually, that's what I would think normally. The question will be on the way. If you send it with a messenger now and he dies on the way, the question is whose, whose responsibility it is, his or yours? I don't know.